Sounds great. Thanks, Derek. I'm really excited to be here. Um, as a marketer, it's, uh, it's really interesting to think about a lot of this stuff from an operational perspective. Um, so I'm going to give you a bunch of things you can use today um, to focus your efforts, right? To, to set it and forget it from a marketing perspective so that you can really focus your efforts on the operations part of the business um, in real time when things get crazy. Um, you know, that's something certainly a privy people always ask me as the head of marketing, they're like, things must be getting crazy right now. I'm like, actually for me, it's sort of dying down a little bit. Um, whereas for others, it's, uh, it's, it's getting a little bit crazy on the engineering side. So, um, yeah, so we'll talk a little bit about sort of why Black Friday and Cyber Monday is such a big deal. Um, some ways you can be driving conversions for today and for tomorrow. Um, a little bit about what I like to call marketing moments, and then how you can turn those marketing moments into conversion opportunities. So why all the Black Friday, Cyber Monday love? I think there's a, there's a few things going on here. Some are real and some are sort of manufactured, right? So the, there's a whole bunch of things that, um, you know, Black Friday over the years is something that sort of happened and then marketers like we do kind of jumped on it and made it bigger and, and more maybe unnecessary than it needed to be. Um, but it's really this manufactured event designed to spur sales, right? You're talking about a captive audience at a captive time. Um, frankly, it's great branding, right? Black Friday, it sounds great. There's a lot of excitement around it. And it really jump starts the holiday shopping season. So what does that really mean? It means that your business is spending more on advertising. Your competitors are spending more on advertising. More shoppers are out there looking for products like yours, which creates more conversion opportunities and more opportunity as a business. So let's look at last year. I think most of you guys probably already know, that, know some of these numbers, but there was over $6.2 billion in sales for merchants of all sizes. Shopify sites alone produced one and a half billion dollars in sales. Um, among that, email was the top channel for driving sales. I think we also saw that the shopping started really early last year. And it actually, most of the holiday shopping spikes that we saw across our network in traffic started on Thanksgiving or even the day before Thanksgiving, things really started to ramp up. People aren't waiting for Black Friday anymore. And then over the weekend, we saw just in our network alone, over a million orders that were that sort of flowed through privy forms and, and things like that. And over 550 million new email, 550,000 new email addresses in three days. And of that, 70% of the traffic was coming from mobile devices, right? So really important to think about that. When we think about conversions, right? When we talk about turning your site into a conversion engine, there's really two types of conversions that we're talking about. The first and the most obvious is really that purchase, right? That's what we're all thinking about. We want to get that first sale from that new customer, right? It's the most exciting part of an e-commerce business. But I think we also know that not everyone's ready to buy and that that first purchase is just the beginning of a relationship. So that opt-in to future communications is just as important, if not more, for the long-term success of your business. In fact, we looked across our network of, uh, this is data I pulled on about 20,000 Shopify stores and found that for every email subscriber captured, $15.23 of revenue is returned. That means these things are really, really tied at the hip. So we're gonna talk about ways to do this programmatically instead of sort of scrambling at the last minute. As we all know, lots of things contribute to conversion. Things like site traffic. You know, how are you getting people to the site? Are they the right people? What is the offer that you're giving them? Um, but certainly more operational things and, and technology-based things like site speed, right? It's super important to make sure that everything is working correctly on your site. You have a good checkout process. Um, you've got the right products. Certainly what the competition is doing. But again, in my talk, we're gonna talk mostly about the on-site shopper experience. So one of the things I sort of mentioned Black Friday, when we were talking about Black Friday, I mentioned it's sort of like a marketing moment, right? What does that mean? 
it's really, there's two ways to think about it. One is a point in time that already exists in the world that you can latch on to, right? Think about something like Cinco de Mayo is a great example, uh, where Corona a few years back really took it on as its own marketing moment, right? Now they sort of own Cinco de Mayo, but they didn't invent Cinco de Mayo. They latched onto something that existed in the world. Black Friday, great example of that. The second, which can help you deeper into the holiday season, is to create your own point in time, right? Whether that's a special sale or a promotion, or my favorite one is always uh, Ben and Jerry's Free Cone Day, which happens in April. You know, they invented that holiday, it became a thing, and now all of their customers and the market at large sort of revolves around Free Cone Day as, as this event that they created. But those aren't the only marketing moments in the calendar. There's actually a whole bunch of different holidays that happen between now and the end of the year that you can use to help drive your promotions and drive your sales um, and drive urgency for people who are visiting your site. Another thing that's super important um, as a marketing moment, you know, you may be thinking about it only operationally, like, but shipping deadlines are super important to think about uh, both operationally and from a marketing perspective, right? There's nothing worse than getting someone to make a first purchase on your site. They order something and instead of being a happy customer, they're frustrated because the product didn't get there in time. They didn't have a gift to give or the right gift to give. And then you're frustrated because they're looking to make a return or you're dealing with it via social media or via support. So shipping deadlines have sort of a double-sided thing where you can use it to your advantage as a marketing moment. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. So let's talk about those set it and forget it conversion drivers that I mentioned earlier, right? These are sort of marketing focused and because, you know, as Derek mentioned, Privy is really focused on on-site displays, things like pop-ups and banners and bars, as well as automated email marketing. So things like newsletters and announcements, certainly, but also cart recovery emails, order follow-up emails, things like that. So that we're really gonna focus some of these tips, whether you use Privy or not, uh, on those types of activities. The first is to make sure that you're scheduling a welcome pop-up well ahead of time, right? This is a great way to get those early opt-ins, right? The bigger your list is, whether it's an email list or an SMS list or even your Facebook Messenger list, getting those opt-ins early and often builds the audience that you can go back to time and time again through the holiday season. It also opens up the pool of people who are eligible to receive your abandoned cart emails. The second is sort of the inverse of that experience, right? So reducing abandonment with sort of pre-scheduled, what we call cart savers. So these are pop-ups that are used when someone goes to abandon your site and they have an item in their cart. A message like this can be shown and these convert really, really well. They help keep people either on site in the moment or you get that opt-in so you can drive them back. And then certainly driving urgency with short-term sales, right? People want to know when they need to make a purchase to get this awesome discount. For better or worse, we've trained shoppers now to really focus on getting discounts through the holiday seasons. So yes, your products are important and your site speed is important and all of those things are super important. But that expectation around some sort of offer is really high. So use that to your advantage. Put time boxes on it, whether it's that Black Friday weekend, whether that's specific moments in the holiday season. We'll talk more about that. And then use those automated emails to bring back people who have abandoned their cart. Right? These don't need to be complex, highly designed things. These are these are emails that you know you don't have to be a marketer to, to any of the things that we're talking about. You can be an operator, you can be a CEO, you can be an intern. All of these things are, are really easy to accomplish and to set up way in advance so you can focus the real time is your real time on real time issues. So an email like this sort of serves as a reminder that someone has left something in their cart. It also helps drive them back to the items that they've, that they've left behind. So really simple direct message uh, in this case with a discount code. And then, you know, as I mentioned a couple minutes ago, really reinforcing whether it's discounts, but even more so these deadlines with persistent bars can be really powerful, right? So 
Again, the worst thing you can do is have someone decide to purchase from you for the first time, you know, whether you're a big brand or a small brand, it doesn't really matter. And then they don't get their item on time. So I would say use those, those published deadlines, whether that's postal service or whatever shipping provider you have, will probably be able to, or should be able to supply you with those dates and then add a few days of buffer, right? Most of us are never going to compete with Amazon on shipping time, but we can be smart about it and actually set ourselves up for success way ahead of the time. And then I think using that same message, right? Those shipping deadlines to drive urgency from people who have abandoned their cart at any time recently, right? Use those dates to your advantage. Come back and get free shipping on all orders over $50. We guarantee pre-Christmas delivery if you order by December 10th, right? This is a really email, easy email to send. Anyone in your organization can write this and drive people back to your site. And then there's also other things you can do, right? Again, this is all about setting yourself up for success so that you're not scrambling during the busiest time of your year, right? So schedule all of your one-time social posts, all of your emails, there's great tools out there like Hootsuite or HubSpot or any of your email providers, certainly Privy. You can schedule all of these things in advance so you're not scrambling. So we talked a little bit about some of the offers that you can use to drive conversion on your site. I think a lot of brands, especially more premium brands, are thinking, I don't like to discount, right? So that's a little bit of a, of a challenge this time of year because we've kind of trained everyone to expect a discount, but that's not the only way to go at it. So there's really three things you wanna ask yourself. What do your visitors care about? What is the behavior, behavior you're trying to drive? And what can you afford to give? And that third one is super important. You know, I think oftentimes it's very tempting to give this big, huge discount and you, you wind up burying yourself or making your holiday season not profitable when it should be the biggest time of your year, right? Just getting a new customer doesn't make a lot of sense if it's costing you too much to turn them into one, right? If you're giving away too big of a discount or your ad spend is too high, it's actually not great for your business. So you really need to think through what do they care about? What is the behavior you're trying to drive? And what can you actually afford to give? So we did research uh, earlier this year. Uh, we went out to about 500 consumers just to understand how they like to engage with brands. And what we found is that 89% of people will opt in for a discount, right? So that could be an email opt-in, that could be an SMS opt-in, that could be a, uh, a Facebook Messenger opt-in. They're willing to do it in exchange for a discount. But that's not the only thing. So you can use free shipping can be really powerful. If you have a strong brand, 41% said they would opt in just to stay informed. And then free content is something that works for about 34% of the consumers that we talk to, right? So you don't have to discount. You've got a bunch of really good options, um, even though discounts definitely are the top, top performer. So I just pulled together, uh, based on some of what we're seeing our customers do, um, 10 offer types that we know work. So the first is just the standard welcome. But the thing I like about this is it's very branded, right? So it's not just a generic sign up, you know, like sign up and we'll tell you stuff. No one wants that. But this feels very alive. It sets an expectation that there's going to be value in what you're, in what you're receiving. The second is that welcome discount, right? People love discounts, especially this time of year. Um, we recommend always using unique coupon codes. That really does a couple of things, right? One is you can set this time limit on it. So in this example, we're saying valid for 24 hours. That's something you can easily do with a unique coupon code that you can't do with, with a sort of, so a single use coupon code um, that you can't do with what we call a master coupon code, one code that goes to everyone. It also really limits the risk of a certain code getting out into the market. Now, if you don't really care about that risk, you just wanna get as many people in as possible, by all means, spread that, that master coupon code everywhere you can, and that's another perfectly valid approach. But you don't always have to do email capture either, right? For people who have 
um, whether they've already subscribed to your email, to your email list, or maybe you just right now, all you care about is getting that purchase. You can actually run, use these same types of tools without a form in it. So this is one from a, a company called Zutano. Uh, they're a, a children's clothing company. And they use and they get huge results off of this uh, that's triggered when people go to abandon their site. Here's it. And then they have another version that they test, which is the same concept, same company, but without a discount in it. And this also performs really well, right? In terms of clicks and actual sales. And here, what they're doing is they're driving urgency by focusing on products that have low inventory. So that's another thing you can really use to drive urgency. Another really good offer is uh, offer type is these sort of like gamified discounts, right? So um, people love to think they're, you know, to attempt to get a great deal. You can actually control how often each of these winning pieces comes up. Um, but these are our top converting campaigns from getting people from unknown visitor into known subscriber. So you can set this whole thing up. People have to enter their information. Um, the wheel spins and, the, and they get a discount or free shipping. Or if you want, you can put losing slices in there as well. Another really powerful thing that you can do, and again, these are all things you can set up in advance of the busy hockey, hop shopping season, is these sort of add to cart campaigns, things that drive up order value, right? So this example is, uh, is offering an additional product based on what's in someone's cart um, with a simple add to cart button right from the pop-up itself. So these, these can work really, really well. Usually it's a complimentary item, not like a wholly new purchase um, that drives up that average order value. You can actually take these things a little bit further too, right? So uh, by using things like geotargeting. So in this example, uh, there's one version that's really focused on in-state residents. This is a company called Copper Closet. They're largely based in Florida. They have online and retail um, where they're, they're focused on the left-hand side, the Florida residents on Florida-based merchandise. On the right, they're focused on a different set of merchandise and they use geotargeting to determine who sees which of these offers. But again, these are complementary items that are added to the cart after someone's already on their way to making a purchase. And then certainly your classic like buy one or in this case buy six and get one campaign um, that can really be excellent conversion drivers for you. Another example here is to really combine online and offline sales by having an offer that's designed to drive people into the store. So whether that's a convenience thing for the, for the customer, uh, driving people to in-store pickup, um, we've also seen these work really, really well to get people in-store and then our customers report back that that drives incremental sales as well. So some key takeaways here, and Derek will have time if you have a couple questions, um, are to really leverage existing marketing moments in the world, things beyond just Black Friday, um, other holidays, um, but also to create your own, create that weekend long sale uh, that you can really use to drive urgency. Number two is to really plan ahead with set it and forget it campaigns, right? You don't want to be scrambling to try to get your marketing going when you also need to be handling support and on the phone with your logistics teams, right? You want to be able to set these things up, forget that they're happening and see the results come in. Third is to choose the right offer for your business, right? So think about what your customers really value and then what you can really afford to deliver. Fourth thing is to really keep it simple, right? I think there's, there's a lot of things you can do, but just because you technology makes it possible doesn't mean you should always do it, especially if you're trying it for the first time at the busiest time of year, right? I always look at the holiday season as not the best time to be testing new strategies. That's a great thing to do the rest of the year. You really want to be buttoned up over the holiday season as things get crazy. Next is to, to sort of test everything, right? So that's your mobile experience, your website experience, any of the tactics that we've talked about here. Make sure that you and your team are testing extensively. Have friends and family who know nothing about business 
go and run through these experiences to make sure they make sense. Oftentimes we're too close to our own, to our own work. Uh, so make sure that you're testing everything and you're doing anything you can to get your systems ready to handle increased traffic. And then lastly, just enjoy the ride. You know, this can be the most stressful time of year for e-commerce merchants for sure, but it can also be the most fun. You know, seeing those sales, those sales start to come in, seeing those new email subscribers, those new SMS subscribers come in, should be fun, it should be exciting. So the only, the only pitch I'll give you on, on Privy is if you wanna get started today with some of these tools, uh, we offer a 15 day free trial, unlimited uh, traffic within that trial. Um, and then very affordable pricing and scales based on the traffic that you get to your business. Uh, and our email plan is also available. That starts at $10 a month. You can check all those out at privy.com slash sign up. Perfect. Awesome, Josh. I, I, I love it. And um, we do have a question for you in chat. And since we have a couple extra minutes, you finished a little early. I, I want to hear your answer to this. <laughs> Um, William asks, what makes Privy better than the pop-ups built into Klaviyo? <laughs> oh, it's great. That's a great question. So there's a few advantages. So Klaviyo has been a good partner of ours for, for years. And there are lots of cool things that they're doing on the form side. I think ultimately the question becomes, why should you pay for Privy instead of using free uh, Klaviyo form? So um, I think there's three things to think about there. One is the flexibility of the designer. If you're someone who has a really nice website and you want to fully customize your pop-ups and your banners and your bars and all of that stuff, uh, really make them feel part of your site, you're going to get a lot more design tools from Privy than you're going to get uh, from Klaviyo. Um, in addition, we offer a couple different display types that they don't offer, like that spin to win campaign, uh, some other things there. But really, the designer is one part of it. The second thing is we have a lot more pre-opt-in pre targeting rules than what you'll get from Klaviyo. So Klaviyo does a really good job with segments. Some, once someone's a known customer, they do a lot, we do a lot of similar things there. Um, but prior to, to sign up, uh, Privy actually has significantly more audience targeting rules that you can use. So based on different traffic sources or page views or other campaigns they've seen, uh, there's just a lot more logic built out there. And then the, the third reason that people will use Privy Forms over Klaviyo Forms is, um, is our customer support team and, and success. We offer unlimited support to all of our users, no matter what you're paying us. Um, if you're paying over a certain amount, uh, you get a dedicated CSM, but certainly we help uh, anyone who is using Privy. So that, those are some of the reasons that people tend to, you know, we've got tens of thousands of, of Klaviyo users who use Privy as well. Um, and those are some of the reasons that they do that. And from my side, as as like maybe uh, having tested this as a merchant, um, what I would say is that yeah, Clavio has the basic features, but when, you, as an example, when you're driving traffic from different ad campaigns and you know the creative of that ad campaign, like maybe you're using a large influencer in this ad campaign, you create the pop up that is the same influencer. Right, so the, the story continues in a sequence and the ultimate real reason is that allows you to increase conversion rate. You're gonna see higher email conversion rate, faster trust building, faster conversion point to sale. And all of that matters because like I said, if this is an ad campaign, we need to return on ad spend as best as possible. We're operating on thin margins here. So there is opportunity there. Now that being said, if you're not, if you don't have enough resources for Privy, then the free pop-up tools from Klaviyo are a great starting point. But at some point, right around the million dollar mark, I feel like you're gonna wanna expand, you're gonna wanna segment, you're gonna wanna get more personalized with your offers on, on each page. And that's when, when this tool really starts to shine. I also did a video review of Privy uh, that I'm sharing here in chat to everyone. Uh, right below the video are some images. If you scroll to the second uh, image thing in the middle image, you'll see all of the attributes that you can uh, select by. There's uh, city, state, UTM source, uh, coupon code that they may have used or, or uh, have been given access to, the current URL, where they came from, et cetera, et cetera. And so the, the really detailed segmentation and targeting. Uh, yeah, and you can, you can sort of stack all those things on top of each other too, right? So I think, you know, the combination, we see, you know, a lot of success with rel relatively simple targeting, but we also see advanced users who are, you know, stacking those things to together to create like really cool on-site segments. 
um, based on frequency of visit, number of visits, and and you know device and items in cart and, and stuff that um, Clavio is just not able able to get at in the in the same way. I heard your CEO took over uh, the Privy account for a store one time. <laughs> is, is, is yeah, <laughs> Ben has definitely been known to do that. Yeah, he, um, you know, the best way to learn for us is often to just sort of get hands on and, and get in there. And, um, you know, I think you, you'd be surprised how, you know, even really large businesses aren't doing some fundamentals here. Um, you know, where they're, where they're not focused on, on growing it. And, and Ben drove some huge successes, a great, back and forth, I can post the link to it uh, between Kurt, uh, Kurt Elster who's speaking later today and, and Ben talking about some of the results they got in that test. So um, there's some cool stuff there. I think the, the one other thing I forgot to mention that's a little different about using uh, Privy Forms versus Clavio Forms is, you know, we're a little more agnostic on where we'll send data. So we'll certainly capture and send data to Clavio. You can use it within Privy, but we can also um, send it to other systems, whether that's through Zapier or direct to something like AdRoll. Um, we're a lot more agnostic about where we'll send the data. So um, if you're using a whole bunch of different systems, that's another thing to think about. Yeah, yeah. Where Where is your data going? We need that central place. And while Clavio is maybe working their way towards being that full-fledged customer data platform, I still have qualms with what they are capable of. So it's missing a few things. Um, I talked about that in the e-commerce fast lane po uh, podcast with Steve Hutt a little bit. That was uh, awesome. fun. <laughs> um, all right, I'm gonna bring Lucas in here. Thank you so much, Josh, for the time. Uh, yeah, I, always a pleasure to, to hear from you and I'm sure we'll be seeing you again soon. Sounds good, thanks, Derek. Good luck this holidays, everyone. Yeah, good. <laughs>